Research findings from UNL, K-State, and the USDA show the temperament of feedlot cattle may affect how those animals perform. It could impact their immune systems, carcass weights, and quality grades. If further studies support this data, UNL's Ty Schmidt says producers might be able to optimize the way they manage those animals in the feedlot. We talked about the research results with Ty in the RB Warren Arena earlier this week. There's, there's been a lot of research over the past uh, five to 10 years looking at um, the temperament of cattle and how it impacts some different things. And um, a collaborator of mine, Dr. Carroll, uh, we work with at the USDA in Lubbock, Texas, he's done a lot of research with them and looking how they perform in terms of handling stress or how they handle uh, immune challenges. And some of the things that he's seen is that the temperamental animals, um, they typically don't show an immune response. Um, you know, if you think about riding a pen and looking for sick cattle, these temperamental cattle won't show you the symptoms even if they are sick. And so we started looking at, you know, what's this temperament going to do and um, how can we utilize it? And so with all the data he's shown that shows that they do have a really altered immune system, they don't show clinical signs and they handle stress a little bit different, we thought we need, you know, we've got great data that shows some interesting things, but it's not going to mean anything to us until we utilize it in the industry. And so our initial thought was how we could use it is to sort cattle upon arrival. Can we sort them based on how temperamental they are and then manage them a little bit different? How did you measure temperament on these cattle and how many of the, how many animals were there total? For the trial that we just conducted, um, we had 2,800 animals that we measured temperament on. And the way we measured it is we used the, basically the um, timing systems they used for barrel back, or uh, not barrel back, but uh, Calf roping? Uh, barrel racing. Okay. There's the one I'm looking for, <laughs> barrel racing. Um, it's basically just some infrared eyes that measure when they're broke, and then when, they, when the first set's broke and the second set broke, it gives you a time. And so we basically set those up at the, at the start of the processing chute and then about nine meters down the, down the alleyway, and it just measured how fast they ran. And, and there's been some really good data that shows you, you can take that, how fast they come out of the processing chute during processing and relate that to temperament. And so it's the only measurement we have right now that's actually uh, an objective measurement when we can actually repeat. And so we utilize that. And basically, when these cattle were uh, processed at the feedlot, what we did was for each pin that came in, we just measured how fast they came out. And then we identified the, the top 20% fastest uh, cattle as temperamental. Was there any difference between that top 20%, that group, and the percent that then was less temperamental? In terms of? In terms of, let's go first in terms of what you had talked about before, in terms of how they relate to maybe a disease or uh, injury within the animal. What we've got from the results is those animals that were that top 20%, um, in terms of their ability to fight our immune response or how they challenged, we looked at lung lesions at the time of harvest, and what we saw in the lung lesions was that there wasn't much difference in which ones had lesions between the two groups, whether it's the calm or not temperamental and temperamental, but the damage that was associated to the, the calm animals or non-temperamental was a lot more severe than what we saw in the, the temperamental animals. So they had respiratory disease, but they didn't near, have near the damage in the lungs that we saw in those, those calmer uh, non-temperamental animals. Was there a difference in the final product, how they graded and how much meat there was? Absolutely. Um, we kind of surprised us, the temperamental cattle, and the biggest thing that got us was their hot carcass weight was lighter. They were somewhere between five and 10 pounds lighter on average compared to the, the calmer, other than the non-temperamental animals. They also had a little bit lower quality grade, you know, so there's a little bit of money being left on the table. You know, if you can find a way to utilize them ahead of time, you know, if you identify them, you can maybe keep them on feet a little bit longer, find some way to mitigate that differences. But so there were some differences quality wise, you know, less marbling score and then the hot carcass weights. That's a real big one that kind of caught our eyes. You kind of answer this question, but then does this lead you to say you should sort based off of this or not yet? My answer is not yet. Um, there's still some research we need to be doing, but I think there's a good opportunity here. Um, it's going to be, a, you know, to apply this in a feedlot setting is going to be a challenge um, unless you you own the, the cattle in the feedlot because you segregating them ahead of time. But I think there's an opportunity for a producer. If you've got a large set of cattle, sort these temperamental cattle off. Um, and possibly even manage them different. And so that's what we're gonna do with our next step is this step, we just took the cattle as they were. We didn't take them out of their pens. We just identified them and then looked at what we saw at the end of the feeding period. So the next step is to do the, the sort and then pull the cattle out. So the temperamental animals will be fed separate and then the non-temperamental or calm animals will be fed separate. And you know, we've even thought about, we're playing with the idea of whether we don't even vaccinate these non-temperamental animals. Wouldn't recommend that by any means right now, but in the research setting, it'd be interesting to see if we can actually get away from it because they don't show clinical symptoms, you know, and they, they have an altered response to stress, so they're not going to get the benefit of that vaccine immediately like we see in these non-temperamental calm animals.